Yeah, I'm like really excited to to have this space today because like these are two projects really close to my heart, um, you know, and I think we have some really, really fun things to talk about with some upcoming events. And um, I mean, there's always so many events coming up, but specifically some like really coming up soon. Um, and I thought maybe like we could kick this off with, like I said, an easy little round of intros. Uh, I'd love to hear um, a little bit, you know, today about your projects, you know, and some of the goals that you're trying to achieve and also some of, like I said, some of the upcoming events that you've got on the radar. Um, love to hear a little bit more detail about those. Um, yeah. And just talk about all things refi. Uh, we've got so many exciting things coming up in the refi world. And, uh, I think your projects are making such, such good impact in the space and like setting such a good tone actually for others to get inspiration from. So, um, yeah, maybe I can just, uh, I'll just go ahead and start uh, to intro myself personally a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm Corinna and I'm, I'm the communications lead at Giveth. I help steward the, the comms team uh, for internal communications um, across social media, but also uh, for our product launches and, um, you know, all the things that Giveth is working on and the roadmap. Um, I'm also a self-proclaimed Regen. Uh, I've been co contributing to Regen's Unite as well and helped host an event here locally in Berlin during Berlin Blockchain Week. And um, ReFi specifically is like really close to my heart. It's been really exciting to see the movement taking off in the Web3 space and getting to explore that ecosystem. Um, it's just like such a fun thing to do on an ongoing basis. And I love to see like the traction building. And um, yeah, so I'm just uh, personally continuing to explore and uh, I love to love to be a contributor in this space. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit more specifically about your projects um, to share with the community here. So I thought maybe we could start with, um, I don't know, we could start with with Refi Spring, um, maybe Harward or Francesca, if you want to speak to that. But I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, maybe like a, an intro from your end. Like what, what is Refi Spring? Sure, I can take that. I'll just first introduce myself to everyone here. So my name's Harrowood. I am project lead for, um, for Refi Spring. I'm relatively new to this Web3 space. I've got a background in and climate movement mobilization, climate strategy, and climate financing. We've been doing this for the last 10 years, and I saw an opportunity in this space about a year ago, and I am like just learning and being having my mind blown repeatedly on a daily basis, which is, um, yeah, it's very exciting, because I think the existing kind of the climate narrative and a lot of people working in the climate space have been, you know, there's a lot of burnout, a lot of um, loss of um, momentum because things aren't going forward. And this, this, this whole new set of tools provides a whole new framework for looking at the problem that we face as a global civilization. So I'm just really excited and inspired on a daily basis. So I'll talk to you a little bit about Refi Spring. So this is, a, it emerged from some conversations early this year which what feels like 10 years ago um and in may we officially began we're a non-profit team which enable global like in real life events to ground this regenerative movement in place-based communities and we do that by providing an event support and educational content and what that really means is it means finance marketing event frameworks event workshops supporting event organizers with their marketing strategy and solving all the little the wrinkles that emerge um, for event organizers on the ground um, and over the last six months we have in total we live we have enabled 22 different events predominantly in the global south are uh, one of our kind of key um I to describe this like one of our key values within the team is really ensuring that this movement grows in an inclusive and pluralistic manner. So our initial criteria for events is really allowing for the for the diversity of different projects, political ideologies, cultures to really establish themselves in the space. And what we're seeing is this really beautiful forest of of communities that are emerging from these events. Um, we've just come to the end of our of our first season of events, and we're looking to take a couple of months to really kind of 
learn from our experience, both as a team providing all these services, but also learning from the organizers what they want to see, what they want to see, what they want to do going forward. And also just like integrating all the huge amount of developments that have happened within the last six months just in this Drupal ecosystem. Um, I will pass on to Roxana, who's our local marketing lead. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Herod. Um, so to avoid any confusion, Francesca is my other name. People who interact with me at Refi Spring know me by Roxana. Um, I joined the team in um, August, early August, and it was very exciting for me because I'm coming from the startup world where I've been focusing the past seven years on building products and new startups um, around with a focus on, on behavioral science and you know the web 2 world and the startups the startup world was so much focused on generating more profit becoming the next unicorn and when i discovered this space where the focus is on making more impact contributing becoming more inclusive and having more care for ourselves and the environment was such a breath of air for me so I didn't think too much I, I joined with all my heart and at Refi Spring I'm, I'm supporting the local organizers with, uh, with their marketing strategy understanding how to position their events um, how to sell tickets if it's the case and just how to think marketing in general because many organizers don't have such a background so we want to be as supportive as we can. And this is also the feedback that, that we got. Um, many people coming new into the space, they're surprised by the kindness and the, pool, the, the amount of resources that the entire space is willing to put together and to offer as help. So that's briefly about me. I think I'll take over from uh, Roxana slash Francesca. Hi, my name is Vaughn, but my name is actually Josh. I am part of the business development team in Colectivo. Colectivo is trying to start a community toolkit, if I can explain it quite simply. This community toolkit looks to empower communities in the form of a wallet, which gives them financial inclusion to other markets, but also community currency, which is backed by ecological state assets. Now, that's what we're trying to do. But on the second part, we're also hosting, we have kind of like a festival arm or an event organization arm. Uh, we're starting off with Colectivo Festival in the island of Curacao. That is starting, that is actually this Saturday on the 22nd. I don't know if anybody is near Curacao or South America, but you're more than welcome to come. Just need to pay your flight ticket. Your event ticket will be taken care of. I promise you that. But um, that's kind of what we're doing. And Colectivo Festival is kind of our first iteration that we look to impact the island of Curacao through entrepreneurship, technology, and uh, educating the public as well is something that I find very important. That's amazing. Super exciting. I wish I was nearby. I'd love to attend. I was checking that out and also have some some friends directly involved in your speaker list. So it's, um, yeah, that's awesome. And what a way to make it inclusive as well. That's great. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, awesome. Like, thanks so much for the intros and also just already diving into like what you're, what you're looking to achieve and your goals behind these projects, right? And um, I was actually wondering if you could, if you could give a little bit more detail on you know how how your platforms work specifically in regards to maybe maybe some information around the user flow if someone's interested in in getting more involved and in actually using it um, maybe if I don't know if Heraward if you'd want to speak to that a little bit yeah yeah I can talk to that we're not necessarily a platform where we have uh, websites and we have social media and we release you know, applications. I mean, many of our support services are offered freely. They are a public good. Anybody can use them as they see fit. But we also offer funding and really specifically working with teams to really make sure that their events um, 
go really well. That process has been relatively simple. So we we have an application which we want to understand. We want to understand that the team is is trustworthy. We know we can actually verify who they are. That they have uh, a, a good idea of the theme and the audience they're aiming for, as well as a light roadmap of what's required to organize the event. And that's really just for us as a, as a kind of security measure to recognize that these, these the people that want to organize events are actually legit. Um, and then beyond that, we developed a funding criteria, which is very much needs based, supporting events that are formed by marginalized communities and People that want to apply for funding are welcome to apply, and we put that through our criteria. And at the end, we we offer them a grant of X amount of of CELO dollars. The the the, the number has ranged between well, one one event was just needed six hundred dollars to support with some logistics, but generally it's between one to three thousand. So it's enough to kind of get potentially a venue or to pay an organizer to do the work that's required to put everything together over a month or two. Um, but really, just grounding that team in, 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 a, in and giving them a basis to do that work. We also provide quite a lot of materials to help them actually find other sponsors. So things like letters to specific types of uh, institutions or uh, a starter deck, which they can modify to, to kind of send to other potential sponsors. Um, but it's been very interesting because a lot of the event organizers already have pre-existing communities or protocols or projects that they're kind of weaving into their, their event. And so we've 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 just been learning so much about the the kind of the, the needs of everyone on the ground, and it's very very diverse, in all honesty. Um, but that's kind of the process that people come through. They they apply, and generally, if they if they've got the momentum, they then they want to do this. We're like all on board and supporting them. Like we're here to like um, how do I say it? Like uncover all the gems. Like there's so many people that are just incredibly talented and industrious like the amount of work it does it, it was required to put on an event like we i've done events before and i recognize like how much work that is so we're there to really support, just provide like the support and the care and the resources that can enable that person to do the, the best to, um thing they can do yeah that's that's the process yeah amazing making it uh easier for someone to actually like really like throw an event and, and host it. Um, I myself went through that learning curve recently and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not a small feat. So um, yeah, it's amazing to make that, really just make that easier all around um, providing that infrastructure and, and that financial support. Um, Potted, would you want to speak a little, or sorry, Josh, <laughs> would you want to speak a little bit more uh, to maybe like the details behind Colectivo? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so, Colectivo, like I mentioned, is launching this community toolkit. If we start for the user base, it really starts at the wallet. The wallet, if, if, if I can give you a great example, on the island of Curacao, we don't have a great payment system. Our banking system are quite outdated. For example, our cards only work on the island of Curacao where we try and go to America or Europe. There are certain problems. It has gotten better over time, but it has taken them 20, 25 years to get better. And that's kind of where um, crypto in general should start. The permissionless activity of being able to pay all over the world is what we try to push forward. And that's kind of what our wallet is trying to do. People can launch with uh, our, our community currency, which in, in, in this instance will be called uh, KGilder. And uh, KGilder, you can pay with it on the island, but if you want to trade it to a different currency and then also be able to pay with it on other current um, communities all over the world that are connected to the Colectivo network. That's also a possibility. But another thing that's very important is the financial inclusion aspect. Because, again, on the island of Curse, you can't really invest in, in uh, stocks, crypto, uh, just any basic asset class in general. And that's another thing where the wallet is immediately connected to DEXs on Celo and Symmetric and stuff and other. We're looking also to integrate with lending markets and uh, other decentralized applications directly within the wallet so that users don't really have to go all to these different apps, but it's an all-inclusive place in their wallet. Okay, okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, that's that's amazing. And like who, and I mean, in, in regards to that, like what, uh, 
you know, how what could you describe a little bit like what your involvement so far has been at like the community level? Um, maybe I don't know specifically like maybe this kind of traction that you've been seeing with it or um, so yeah. This whole thing started kind of in 2018. Um, the Curacao didn't really like I mentioned didn't have a proper currency. We started off with the Curacao, which is basically a dye fork. And uh, we kind of got a lot of merchants, about 50 merchants and people to start using it on the island. It's kind of like the first experiment. And then right now, instead of just forking die again, we kind of decided to create our own currency backed by ecological state assets and create our own wallet for payment systems. So that's kind of where it um, all originated. When it comes to user growth, we already have about 50 merchants on the island that were using Curadai, so they will be immediately onboarded. And when it comes to users, that is kind of our next step when it comes to business development is getting users on board. And we have some great ideas for them to get on board. Okay, that's, I mean, that's, that's awesome to hear. Like, how are they, um, how's the community reacting so far? I mean, you're, you're doing some, sounds like you're getting some traction there. Um, are they giving, are you getting certain or like feedback from them uh, that, you, that you'd be interested to share? Um, not right now, because I think the biggest aspect for us is our wallet and everything goes live this Saturday. The MVP goes live this Saturday, and we're going to be presenting it at the festival to about 750 to 1,000 people, and that's kind of where a majority of our feedback will come. They will be, like, the people will be using it on site, and any crashes or anything like that are basically... All the feedback will be coming on Saturday for wallet development. So that's where majority of our feedback will be coming from. Oh my God, that's so cool. You must be so excited. <laughs> uh, excited and nervous. And nervous. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be amazing. You know, it's uh, even if it's not perfect, like it's just going to, it's going to be so valuable and it's going to be a great place for people to connect, you know, and, um, and it go it goes uphill from there. So, um, wow! So Saturday is going to be a big day at Colectivo Festival. Very cool. Um, yeah. Uh, well, maybe like going over to Roxana and Harold. I like I know that Refi Spring has definitely been, um, you know, the backbone behind all kinds of different events. Um, would you want to speak a little bit that to that? Because I'm. I even myself was trying to like understand the scope of like what events you've been involved with so far, have supported so far. You mentioned like the global South. Um, like, do you have any more specifics around like, yeah, where exactly um, those events have been and like how, what your work is looking, looking like so far into that regard? Yeah, I can speak a little bit about the, the wealth of community builders that we have uncovered over the last six months. So this all began um, at the Refi on conference in Austria, hosted at the Crypto Commons Hub um, in a lovely valley in the middle of nowhere in Austria, which I'd recommend everyone get to at some point in their lives because it's a real um, hub for innovation and radical thought. Um, and yeah, and that that on conference is really focused on forging alliances between different you know, neighboring initiatives with other protocols and really exploring. What does refi mean? What is this growing system like? And yeah, I can speak to, uh, there's been such a diversity of different events. Um, we've had events such as refi Portugal, um, which is really about collect, like connecting refi protocols with land-based ventures and regenerative farmers and, in, and supporting that interaction. We've had events in places like Silicon Valley and in Berlin and in Germany, which are more focused on actually onboarding underrepresented minorities. Um, we've also helped to support kind of interdisciplinary gatherings, um, one which was in Germany aimed at kind of really supporting refi thought leaders to engage with people that are not are working in other areas of change, such as social justice, um, within, uh, kind of environmental justice. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, there's also, there's been events in, in Africa, in South America, in Asia. A lot of these events have been primarily community focused, such as events in Cameroon, in Kenya, in Uganda, which were working with local farmers, local stakeholders of regenerative projects and introducing them like very kind of like 
lightly to what Web3 is. What ReFi has been ably supported by organizations such as Shamba Network, did a lot of kind of education. Also, we did an event with Good Dollar where they were talking um, to like a local um, local school children and local uh, young adults around the problems of inflation and how potentially UBI um, can, can, can temper some of the kind of exist, existing problems that are um, emerging. All of this is to say is that there's been a, a, a huge range um, of events. Um, I can, I can list them all out, um, but broadly some of the most exciting ones that we've supported is, is I, one of them that comes to mind immediately is Refi Barachara. So this is an event which was really well hosted by Joe Brewer, who's written a very interesting book, which I'd rec- recommend that everyone reads because it really talks about uh, an appropriate design pathway to support the kind of the emergence of a bioregional network, which actually potentially could survive the kind of coming climate ecological emergency. Um, Marcelo, our community lead who's based in Brazil, has done an incredible job really networking and creating various different hubs along the kind of southeast of Brazil in Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo and um, Victoria, where they've set up kind of relatively regular six week uh refi meetings with people that are already working in the web3 space normally for kind of more social issues and that's generating lots of momentum going forward we've already had quite a few different organizers from countries such as argentina uh from tanzania south africa that want to organize events um i I, yeah i could i could carry on talking but i just wanted to give you a a spread of the uh the kind of the wealth of events that are happening um in the refi space yeah yeah, that's a nice that's a nice spread for sure. I mean, it's also like so nice to hear about um, projects impacting the the global south and also just more exposure to this across the global south because I feel like there's just so many events um, in this space that are concentrated in the north, right? So um, I'm, I can imagine that there's quite a bit of like impact from an onboarding perspective, as you're saying, right? You have people coming who are like very new and curious. Um, and I mean, I mean, uh, is is that the case that you're seeing? Like in terms of, I don't know if it's if it's too early to ask, or have you have you been gathering some or been able to gather some key insights like across this widespread um, of events that are that you could pinpoint like a few of those that you're learning, like in terms of the impact Correct. that these are creating. In terms of the events, like it, we've we've been ha- we've actually just started our kind of feedback process, and it is quite early to really identify specific projects um, or or niches that have emerged from Refi Spring events. What we are seeing is the establishment of kind of new Telegram chats and kind of potential informal meetings. Um, I think if there's anything I can necessarily state as a pattern is that a lot of the event level of of education and also wariness around projects which claim to have kind of beneficial effects is quite strong so they've had to do a lot of work and CeeLo are already doing a lot of this work already but we've had to really support them to to trust that we're not trying to rope them into another another scheme um but yeah, as I said like a lot of the each individual community is very unique and we are working at kind of the edges of people that are predominantly already focused on regenerative projects on the ground or involved in um and aren't necessarily so familiar with uh with the with the tech and so that that kind of onboarding journey is is as 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 we've all experienced is quite unique to each person and i just just to kind of go on to that one of the kind of key pieces that i haven't spoken about yet is a learning journey into refi it was meant to be released before the first events um however there were some delays but this will be coming out on november 11th and this will hopefully provide a lot of the kind of the grounding and context so people can can understand the refi space from from starting at level zero so we hope people can come to events in the future with a bit more information rather than it being all on the day That sounds amazing. When did you... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I apologize. I wanted to add a tiny insight that I gathered and touched my heart because I could witness uh, communities around the world um, 
in the refi space already supporting each other. So, for example, event organizers in one region going into another region, perhaps on the same continent and offering support with speakers or with uh, organizing the event structure. And also um, another outcome was understanding how some of the communities were already having regenerative habits, but they were not aware of the Web3 space. And these events have been uh, such an amazing opportunity for them to understand that they can relate um, to the financial system in a different way and learn and understand more and and actually find um, different benefits in in this way of contributing to the world. Yeah, that's that's really great to hear because like that's also something I've been thinking a lot about, you know, is like what is the like what's the significance of having these like in real life events in these in this space, you know, because like this um you know, web3 in general is just so highly digital and I feel like there's just so many opportunities already to connect digitally and I mean, here's a perfect example of what we're doing right now. Um and there was also even like during covid time there were so many conferences and events that were just being run like solely digitally um, where people could like, you know, get information that way and connect in that sense. But in real life events are still just so important. It seems like, you know, um, we've touched on a couple things in regards to maybe like exposure to onboarding or maybe just exposure even to like new networks Um are there like that's I, I I was curious what your perspective is on like the the key importance of having in real life events um, for for your mission, you know, like for what you're really trying to achieve. Like um, if you had to narrow it down, you know, like what are the what are like the key things that you think are um, yeah most significant about about bringing people together in person at these events? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, so, uh, like, no, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I can speak to that. I mean, I think the answer is simply community. And we've got to ground these refi like ideas in place. And like as much as digital networking and events can bring people together and you can have interesting conversations, you actually need to have that physical experience, like to actually be with people and and yeah, like I have a kind of a physical response and often that's only really p- possible through an in-person event. Like a lot of the actual um, experience isn't necessarily the, the talks you listen to, but it's the, the vibe that you bring in, it's the connections that you make, it's those informal conversations you have with people that you recognize that you have a shared interest with and you have shared values and you form a relationship. Um, and so, and, and broadly going forward, as a as a kind of global community regenerative finance ecosystem has to recognize that we all need to find our communities like where we're at the the coming destabilization the the, the pace of climate change is very dramatic and like the, the more that we can establish like play space community is that the kind of the, the health it will all be um yeah that's, that's kind of my response um in terms of like what we were aiming to do it's really to aim to create people that can work together be together and actually build things for their communities rather than kind of parachuting in for events and then stepping out again yeah 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 um i totally agree with you on that and like i'm also thinking like i just like josh i think it's it's so interesting also like for instance what you're saying with the collectivo festival like serving as like a as an event where to gather feedback like in person, right? Like in real life, um, it seems like you're just going to get like so much, so much feedback in this one event, like on that one day uh, launching something like that. Um, is that for you, uh, you know, one of the key significance of, of having an event on the ground and like, and, and I'm also curious, like why, why you've chosen to do it that way actually. Um, for us or in general, for in my opinion, like these in-person events are so important, especially for people just trying to get into this space. Like I remember when I went to my first event, 
I learned so much and progressively going to just different events, meeting new people has always been the best thing for my network and in general people's network because people will just learn new things and meet new people and coming and having this launch at uh, having us launch our product at a festival. It's a great thing for us to learn, but also for them to learn together. Because if I, if you're launching something and you're in your room and you have to figure it out by yourself as someone that isn't very deep in web three, it's quite difficult. But if you're in a room or in a festival with hundreds of people also having the same problem, you guys can learn together and figure stuff out together. So that was kind of our, our, our thesis behind it. Yeah, that's super cool. Are you going to have like, is it basically like people are going to be able to troubleshoot with each other? Um, or are you going to have like a team on the ground that's helping? I don't know. Uh, like how are you, how are you planning to actually set that up? So we have a team on the ground at the event. We will have like a wallet booth where people will be able to get onboarded, but also if there's any problems or anything, they can report it back over there. And we will have someone walking around at all times, making sure everything's working perfectly. Okay, cool. And like, and how are you um, how are you planning to like gather the feedback? So you have like hundreds of people there, right? Um, I think you said 700 if I have that number right, something like that. Um, Somewhere around that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like uh, how like are you going to give people a way to like submit the feedback digitally? Um, of course they're also going to be able to I'm sure like give it to, on the ground, but like how are you how are you structuring that? So both digitally and on the ground is kind of the idea, you know, if they're um, at the booth, they can report it there directly to the wallet development team. And uh, if not, they can just submit it uh, digitally. So then mostly after then we will have like a huge database of uh, feedback. We can probably start implementing that directly there after maybe a week after, since everybody deserves a little bit of a break after the sprint we've had, but that's kind of the idea. Yeah, okay, super cool. I'm getting like major FOMO now. <laughs> Just would love to like see this in action. Me too. And I also have friends going there and they, they kept inviting and calling me there in Krasnow. So it sounds so amazing to have such a festival, Josh. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You couldn't have done it with even Refi Springs help. They helped us with a lot of stuff as well. Yeah, and I can tell you, like, we had that experience also with Giveth, you know, we were at ETH Barcelona back in July, and um, we actually had the experience with, like, a really nice booth there and um, some swag, and we had the option for people, anyone who was curious to learn how to use Giveth and how to, um, you know, make their first donation on the platform, like, we had our team there helping people to learn how to do that, right, and helping them to walk through the process, and it was super valuable. You know, we onboarded like over a hundred people and uh, like hundred new donors. And also um, we were able to collect like feedback on the ground from them directly, you know, to understand, you know, how their experience was in the onboarding process and also like using the platform for the first time. And um, that was pretty awesome, you know? So this is like, this is like next level times seven, <laughs> like 700 people doing that at once. And um I think it's really exciting and it's really like motivating for both the attendees and also like for the team who who's putting the project out. Right. So it's a it's a really cool use case, I think, for for an in-person event. Um, it, well, yeah. And then there was another thing I wanted to I wanted to touch on as well, because like from a regen perspective, you know, one, I think, major differentiator when we talk about regenerative systems um, in, in regards to like the, some of the systems that we've set up today is it going to be really focused around collaboration between projects. Um, you know, for, if we're looking at systems change, uh, we really need to be looking at things holistically and instead of just operating in competition with one another, we're much stronger as a whole. If we can, if we can set up, you know, the best possible partnerships and collaboration opportunities with one another, and um, I, so I was, I was wondering if we could dive a little bit deeper into, you know, how your, you know, how you see partnerships and collaborations from your perspective, 
a little bit maybe about how your projects specifically have been benefiting from certain collaborations in the ecosystem um, and, you know, what be what the importance is of that to you. Um, if you'd like to say a few things about that, I'm like really curious what, you know, what you think may be Harroward from, from your perspective. That's a really good question. Um... In terms of how we're approaching our partnerships, um, we've been working with a lot of, uh, I think the terminology is always difficult to distinguish, but like partners or hosts who are people that are working on the actual community themselves. So a lot of our event organizers are actually embedded within communities. Um, so the partnership has been established through, for example, I'll give the example of Shamba Network and, and Refi Spring. So Shamba Network, ran their event in Refi Kenya, but they also really supported the other sort of sister events in Tanzania and um, and Uganda, um, really enabling those events to happen through supporting them with speakers, um, with kind of advice on how to market themselves. Um, and going forward, one of the kind of the key areas that we'd like to focus on is how we can actually support more community builders to access the information and the resources that they need going forward. So we're establishing something called the Refi Well, which we hope to add many different members to which they and that will provide a kind of, um, call it a database or a resource center for any event organizer that wants to find a speaker or find a workshop or need specific support around branding, or even if it's specific materials around um, merchandise or other areas, we're gonna create that easy to access um, well that anybody in the refi community can can access and um, run an event as simple as having an event just in your living room introducing it to your friends and family to a much larger event which brings together the whole network for a conversation about interoperability um, really the, the kind of the, the scales change um, but that's how I kind of view partnerships is that we want to enable more people to access these resources um, to, to support the kind of onboarding process yeah and I, I also love what you said before even like with having previous event organizers like supporting new event organizers right or like local event organizers in the area um it's another form of like collaboration like within the pro super cool you know like not only refi spring like collaborating with with other organizations, maybe from a marketing perspective or support perspective, but also like enabling collaboration like within the Refi Spring network, um, you know, like people helping out other people. And I, I, I don't know, I, I just, I think that's really awesome to hear. Cause even like in the event space, you know, often like event organizers are literally competing for attention against other event organizers. You see that in like the traditional world all the time, you know? So um, yeah, I think that's really cool. And it's like, yeah, enabling your network to onboard the new, uh, yeah, the growth of the network as new people enter to participate, they get supported by more experienced participants. It's so really uh, like taking it to a meta level, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Josh, uh, yeah, would you, I'm, I'm also curious, like what kind of maybe partnerships Collectivo is involved in, or like how collaboration. I could, I could, I could if they don't manage to properly. Yeah. For us, our most important aspect for uh, partnerships is actually looking to launch these uh, community, this community toolkit all over the world. We're looking to partner with a bunch of uh, different organizations that have a community right now, and kind of want financial inclusion into the finance world and the world, with the fact of. Um, Launching community currency that by backing it with different ecological assets. So, an example is um, if we work with a project called uh, Gain Forest or Project Dark, they have a community in uh, in uh, Paraguay that are in need of financial inclusion, and we can look to launch a community currency with them and have them onboarded onto our uh, network. That's kind of where we look to uh, uh, partner with people. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, 
Sorry, I had a little bit of trouble hey, hearing. May, may I ask a question? Uh, yep. Could I ask a question to, to sure, Josh? I'm, I'm curious about, uh, like, to, to enable communities on the ground to like, feed in their natural back assets to this and to back the local currency. They would, they, they, there's a lot of work done on the methodology um, and sort of the, the sort of technical support behind that. Like, how does that process work? Um, if you've got to that that point, yeah. Hey, would you mind repeating that question? It kind of got cut off there. At the sure, end. sure. No, I, I was just, I was, gonna, I was kind of following on from your idea. Yeah. Hey, Harward, I think you got cut off there. Oh, was I getting... How long was I muted for? Uh, Maybe you just want sorry, to start over. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, gosh. Okay. Sorry, Josh. Yeah, the question was just following up on your um, your idea of generating local community currencies, which are backed by locally produced natural-backed assets. I understand that there's, a kind of, there's, there's varying methodologies that are required to do that. So I'd like to kind of get your idea on, on how you approach that with local communities and what's the state of play um, for you to enter a new community and, and do that kind of developmental work. So kind of for us, the thesis behind it is, of course, it's, the community needs to be completely open to this, right? If, if it isn't open or the majority isn't open to this, we will not. Uh, want to launch anything over there. That's one. And when it comes to the methodologies gained by this, um, we are using kind of an, uh, the geospatial NFTs. I don't know if anybody here has heard about it, but uh, Colectivo and Astro Protocol currently wrote a uh, blog post on it. I don't know if we can link it here for people to read, but it gives a great rundown on how we back community currencies through ecological assets, through the use of uh, geo NFTs. And when it comes to launching these um, these currencies in different communities, it is very, very important that there is a team on the ground doing a lot of the work. Because, like, I know we're working, uh, we currently went through a, a time where everything was kind of um, over the internet. Zoom became a huge thing, and uh, we're doing Twitter spaces right now. But that human interaction is very, very important still, in my opinion. It's something that is kind of losing its touch due to COVID and something we're really trying to push back on and getting these communities launched and having people on the ground, onboarding them is something that we strive for. Awesome, I've just posted the link to the article in the chat. Um, yeah, Karina, I see that there's actually an organizer, um, Jonathan from Refi Uganda. He might want to speak about an event that he organized, um, just to give, an idea, give people a, another view of the, kind of the style and uh, content of Refi Spring events. If you'd be curious to speak, Jonathan, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that, personally. Um, but I'll let uh, Jonathan decide if he wants to maybe um, <laughs> request to be a speaker. But I'd, I'd, be, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, actually. Maybe we can, uh, yeah, we can we can give him a minute. Oh, there you are. Yeah, because I also like I actually like retweeted a thread very recently about um, events in in Africa, and I just think like um, I'm really hoping to go there personally sometime soon. I've been trying to go back for like years because I I just had like an amazing experience there a few years ago, and there's so much innovation there and. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking for an event to go to. <laughs> so, hey, hey, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. Um, hey. Uh, um, my name is Jonathan Olwenyi. I'm the founder of Iweka Uganda. Iweka Uganda is a community-founded um, non-governmental organization that's working on environment and social development. Um, of late, we, we've been uh, 
planting fruit trees in schools and health centers and we're also doing uh, 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 at, a, at a agroforestry we train um local farmers on uh, regenerative agriculture we create awareness on climate change and we also plant uh, um, uh, bamboo trees along the river banks just to protect wetlands and control soil erosion. Uh, besides uh, tackling the climate crisis, we also um, work on the side of social development that we give scholastic materials to the most vulnerable children and we train young adolescent girls and women on how to make uh, reusable um, sanitary towels uh, above all, we actively uh, empower women and children here at the grassroots level. So I'm really so happy to be part of the Refai team, Gitcoin, and all that. Thank you. And maybe if there is a, 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 a question from someone or someone wants to know something, I'll be able to speak it out. Thank you. Awesome. The, the sound like amaz amazing initiatives. Um, regenerative farming is also really close to my heart. I uh, used to work in vertical farming myself, and um, I'm actually like pretty sold on the regenerative farming topic. I think that's the future for us. And um, I just so I understand, like, uh, did, you, did, did I understand Harewood correctly that you just had a refi event there locally? I mean, I can I can let Jonathan not speak to that. Yeah, there was an event uh, held through Jonathan's IOAC organization. And I maybe can, Jonathan, you can take over and let people know how it went. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was, uh, I was asking you, Jonathan, um, uh, I think I understood correctly from Hareward that you had an event locally, like recently. Just curious how it, how it went, if you wanted to share anything about, about that. Like maybe some of the responses you received or, um, uh, how the community, how the community reacted um, to it. They invited the member of parliament that represents climate change in Uganda. And uh, he honored our uh, the invitation and he was present. We took him to plant uh, um, bamboo trees. And uh, from there, he also came and spoke to the local farmers. We trained um, more than 376 farmers and uh, I really say thanks to our um, friends who contributed towards our event. 376, that's a really big number. That's amazing, actually, from one yeah. event. Wow, okay, that's awesome. That's quite an impact. And how, yeah. how big was that event? You know how many attendees off the top of your head like uh, were there? Um, pardon. Um, do you know how, like, how many people attended the event? Like, number of people who came in person. Yes, um, because we we had um, um we, we, we had two events on the same day. That was the planting of bamboo trees in one wetland. Other actually. It was a river bank. Then after that, we, we had to go and now do the, the, um, uh, the regenerative training. But uh, the number that we, uh, we, uh, the, the, uh, we registered, excluding um, children, they were 376. But uh, our, the, uh, that is all because uh, the, our organization is located in a community that uh, when you drown, like um, now, it, it, at the, the, in 10 minutes, you can get um, uh, the 500 people just from nowhere. So we, we were so happy that, but uh, there were those numbers that came uh, when now we, the, the, uh, and the participant we were having meals are now we, we couldn't actually uh, maybe uh, um, uh, the, the send them off because they came towards lunchtime and they had um, lunch with us. 
So um, it, it, it was more than the 376 number. Yeah. Um, well, that's like, that's still, it's very impressive, Jonathan. Honestly, I'm very, I'm very happy for you. It sounds like a, a really big success. Um, congratulations and um, anyone who wants to learn more I'm sure can check out your profile and uh, thanks for sharing thanks for thanks for speaking today um, thank you thank you welcome and for the and just the uh, yeah I think I think all in all I just want to give maybe then everyone a quick chance to um, maybe say any last words because I'm, I'm I'm also wondering like what you know basically what are the next steps for your projects now and um, and how you know ultimately how can we invite the community to par participate in in refi spring events and also um, of course you've got Collectivo Festival coming up this Saturday um, but maybe just also anyone who'd like to participate in Collectivo moving forward um, Josh do you maybe want to say a few words to that? Collectivo Festival to anybody listening here. Uh, I personally invite you to the event. If you can make it, make your way to the event, we will guarantee you entry. You don't need to pay for the uh, entrance ticket. Just pay for your flight and your hotel. And uh, if you are there, hit me up on Twitter. I will take you around the island as well. Uh, you kind of need a car there, and it's quite difficult to rent a car. But since you guys decided to join this Twitter space and uh, become my friend, I will take you personally around the island and show you the beautiful beaches and uh, restaurants over there so you're more than welcome to come now i'm fomoing even more <laughs> thanks for that and um yeah if uh roxana or howard if you want to say if you was a, like how can the how can the community get involved with with refi spring <laughs> i don't know how to compete with that i mean <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I can answer that. So we have still got quite a few events coming up over the next month. They are distributed across the world. So I'd, check, I'd recommend people check out refispring.com and look at the events uh, coming up. Um, broadly, we are kind of taking a bit of a hiatus for the next couple of months to really kind of reassess um, how our events will run, how we can actually support more events going forward, how to um, discover potentially new new uh, revenue streams, but this coming January we'll be launching our second season of events, and that's when I think the people can get more involved if they want to um, in their local events, whether that's being organising or attending. Um, otherwise, we are very open to kind of collaboration and partnership. Looking forward, um, uh, is is really doing a great job leading on that partnership side. So if you have a project that you want to either see at events or you're interested in collaborating with us on a specific kind of event creation or support service for event organisers, we'd be really happy to help to hear from you. Um, yeah, otherwise I'd recommend going to, going to, to see Josh. That sounds like a too good too good opportunity to miss <laughs> personal tour of a Caribbean island. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. Personal real, tour. real privilege to an honor to speak with you all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doubling down on what Herbert just uh, invited the community to. Since I'm full on working on building the refi well, I'm inviting uh, all the projects and the communities that want to to support and share resources and join forces to support the refi movement to reach out to me i'm super happy to connect and um, to create even more resources for the space and help onboarding people 